Continuous integration is one of the biggest steps that you can take as a developer to making your application more maintainable and more scalable. My name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're taking a deeper look at using continuous integration with an Angular application. We're going to be using tools like GitHub and Travis CI in order to set up and maintain our continuous integration setup. Now I know there's lots of different tools out there and everyone has their favorites, but I'm just going to go through this one set that I feel like works really well for beginners that are just getting started with continuous integration. Let's get started. So as always, we are getting started here with a ng nude application using the Angular CLI. Now, because we're going to be doing things like tests and unit tests and things like that, we need to actually fix up a couple things in the default project. So First, I'm going to jump into the unit tests of our app component, and we're just going to make sure that this says app instead of CI example, because if you look in our app component, we see title equals app, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make the same sort of change in our end-to-end -end test here. So if we just take a quick peek at our end-to-end -end test, we should be able to say app, and now if we run something like ng test in our CI example project, everything should be working perfectly, which means we know that our application is ready to go onto a CI server. Perfect, three specs, zero failures. All right, so the only other change I'm gonna make here uh, is because we're also gonna be doing some serving directly from our CI project, I'm going to be sharing the folder here with dot slash instead of slash. Um, what this will allow me to do is put this folder in a uh, subfolder of our host, which is something that GitHub does. All right, so we've got this project. Let's go ahead and push this up to GitHub. So we've got a couple changes, so tweaks to test and index. And now let's go ahead and create a repository. So I'll just create this repository called CI example, make it public. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this URL and we're gonna push directly to it. Stephen, Stephen flew an example, type in my password here. All right, so we've taken our Angular application and we've now pushed it up to GitHub. Now there's a couple things that we're gonna to wanna to do. We're going to want to uh, now connect to Travis. So if I go over here to Travis CI, you'll see I already set up an account. Uh, but we don't have any repositories yet, so I'm going to want to go into Manage Repositories and give access to the CI example project. So we're going to give that access, and then as soon as we push up a Travis CI project, that should be showing up in this folder. Um, another thing that the project is going to need in a little bit is going to be a GitHub token. We can get that directly from GitHub in the developer settings, and we'll register a new application, and we'll just call this CI example. Oops, not... I'm in the wrong folder here. Personal access token, and we'll generate a new token here, and we'll call this CI example. What you call it doesn't really matter here, and because this is a public repo, I can just give it that one public repo access. All right, so we're gonna copy this. We're gonna use this in a little bit once we're actually doing our Travis setup. Um, so you'll see that there's no integrations yet here. That's because there's no Travis.yml files. So let's go ahead and jump into our app component, uh, excuse me, and into our project and create that. So we'll just save that file out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a brand new file called travis.yml. And we're gonna save that right in the source of our project because that's where Travis is gonna look for it. And I'm just gonna copy and paste a pretty good example starter that I've got. And I'll, I'll walk through it briefly here. So uh, we're using Node.js to run our continuous integration, we're going to use Node.js version 8.1. We're going to install only master branches. Um, although we're going to be running our tests on NEPR, uh, we're only going to be running deploys and things like that on master branches. Uh, we want to install Chrome because we're going to be using this for a little bit of unit testing later. Let's globally install the Angular CLI. Uh, you can use Yarn and you can try and cache the Node modules folder so you don't have to reinstall that every time. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do an ng build dash dash prod and we're going to deploy this up to GitHub pages using this GitHub token. So if we save this file and actually add that to our repo, we can say add Travis and we will go ahead and commit this. Now, 
what I can do is I can actually create a new branch for this. So I'm going to say git checkout dash b. We'll just call this Travis. And I'm going to git push dash u origin Travis. And if I can get my username and password right, what we should see is that uh, we now pushed up a branch called Travis into our GitHub repository. And if we just jump back to our repository list, we should see that branch here. And it's saying, hey, would you like to create a pull request? Yes, I would like to create a pull request with this. And so pull requests in general are going to automatically pull in Travis as soon as a integration is detected. So let's go ahead and see if this integration is detected. It looks like it is. And if you remember that GitHub token that we created, this is where we're going to need to paste that in. So GitHub token. We'll just copy and paste this token and add that in. So this token is now available to our Travis script when we're doing this deployment because it's going to be using that GitHub token. All right, so if we go back, I can either manually rerun this or I could do something like a push to my branch, but we'll just restart this build. And what we're going to see is it's going to automatically build the repository and make sure that ng build dash dash prod succeeded without errors and then call that a success because that's all we've put in the scripts tag so far. Um, and so while this is actually running, um, you can see down here all of these steps that it's taking as part of the build. So it's installing Git, it's installing Chrome, it's installing Node, it's installing all these things that you need. And then it's going to go ahead and do the setup that we asked it to do. And then it will actually build our Angular application. So I'm going to fast forward just a little bit while this install completes. All right, now we can see we're about two and a half minutes in. We can see that our ng build dash prod was successful. It exited with a status zero. This should actually also be reflected on our CI environment. So uh, it looks like this hasn't refreshed yet, so I'll just manually refresh it. All texts have passed, so we can now rebase this commit and merge it into our master branch. And then we'll go ahead and delete this branch as well. And then we'll get back to master. All right, so now we are up to date with our CI and we're up to date with our GitHub repository. Now we can go ahead and do something a little bit more interesting. So you'll notice when we merge this PR, uh, it actually kicked off another build. And so what's going to happen is at the completion of this build, we should actually see the uh, application installed directly to GitHub pages. Uh, but rather than wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do two more things uh, directly within your CI integration. So we're going to add two more scripts here. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do an ng lint. So this is going to run our linter as part of our CI integration. So uh, if you're not familiar with the ng-lint command, this just runs the TypeScript linting tools uh, using things like Codalizer if you have it. Uh, and we'll make sure that your code is following your best practices. Uh, and then we're also going to do something else. We're going to run our unit test. So I'm going to say ng-test dash dash watch equals false. We have to do watch equals false because by default, ng-test uh, enters a watch mode, uh, which would never complete, which is not actually what we want as part of our CI. And now the other thing is ng-test also assumes that you have a Chrome browser that's going to be popping up. Uh, we actually want to run this headless, and because we're running this within Travis, we want to make sure that we can do this in a way that uh, is not using the Chrome sandbox. And so we're going to go ahead and jump into our Karma configuration, which you can find just directly in your source folder. And we're going to add a couple things. So we're going to add a new browser section which defines a custom browser called My Headless Chrome. This basically allows us to take uh, the Chrome headless default configuration and add a bunch of flags to it. And what we're seeing is we're disabling translate, we're disabling extensions, we're, we're giving it a remote debugging port. So this is one of the key magic things about Chrome headless, which is how you actually interact with it. And for Travis's sake, we're turning off the sandboxing capabilities of Chrome uh, because they don't allow that when you're only running as a user. So with these two changes, I've updated the Travis.yml to add ng-lint and ng-test, and I've updated the Karma config, and we actually have to delete the other browser section here. So I've said, hey, instead of running on Chrome or head Chrome headless, we're going to run on my headless Chrome with these extra flags that make it run well on CI. And what we can do is we can now create another branch. And 
And then let's go ahead and commit these changes in. And let's push those up to the server. Oops, that was not supposed to go up to master, that was supposed to go up to lint and test. All right, so now we've created a new branch in our remote repository since this is complete. Perfect, can clear that out. And we should be able to create a new PR directly within GitHub, seize the new branch. Let's just create a new PR. And so then this will automatically run Travis directly on this branch with all these changes. And we'll, we'll see if that was successful. Uh, in the background, we should have also seen that our master branch actually built successfully. Uh, and we should actually have seen at the end that a deployment was run, deploying application here. So you can see all of the status of what happened there. Uh, or we can actually go directly to our uh, Stephen Flynn example .github.io, and then it should be the name of the repository, which should be CI example. And that did not quite work. So let's take a look at why that didn't work. So we can see our build was successful. Uh, we can even see that it created a GH pages branch for us. And if we just take a look at the code on the GH pages branch, ah, we deployed the wrong folder. So we deployed CI example slash CI example. Perfect. So there our app is, it's being deployed. If I wanted to clean that up just a tiny bit, I could tweak the Travis config to go to CI example here instead of just deploying the general dist folder. All right, so we talked about this PR that we created um, that actually runs tests now. So if we look in the background of our running tests, uh, we should see that in addition to all of the standard things, uh, installing the repo, uh, installing the Angular CLI, it's going to run the ng-lint, and it's going to run ng-test. And so if we write some code, let's write some really dumb code uh, that's not actually valid, and let's add that into this PR. So let's jump into my app component. And let's go ahead and say something that's not even valid. So let's say var dumb equals here. So this is dumb for a bunch of different reasons. I misspelled dumb. Vars are not allowed in a class definition. You shouldn't be using var anyway because you should be using a const instead. Uh, this is never being used. Uh, there's all sorts of terrible, terrible things with this code. And so let's actually commit this in. So add some terrible code. And we'll just push this up as an addition to the branch that we have. And we'll just push it up here. And so if we look at our PR, it should automatically be updated because we are tracking to this branch. And now we see the two commits, add lint and unit test to Travis. Uh, and then this new PR push should actually kick off a new set of Travis tests and see what's going on here. So again, I'm going to fast forward a little bit just through the most recent uh, run of the unit tests here. All right, it looks like we are now getting past the generic Travis setup and into the actual running of our application. So we're running ng-lint and we're seeing that's failing. It's exiting with a status one, which is invalid. Our ng-test should fail as well because this is not actually valid TypeScript anymore. And so I don't even care if our ng-build-prod is successful or not, uh, which it was not. We've got a bunch of exit status ones, which means that our continuous integration has failed and our PR is basically no good. So momentarily, we should see that the uh, status from the build is going to be reported back to GitHub, letting us know that the uh, PR is not green and that we should not allow this PR to be merged. Now you have a basic setup for continuous integration within your application. This should improve your collaboration and velocity 
while at the same time making your code more maintainable. If you want more information about Angular, follow me on Twitter, at Stephen Fluin. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.